Page 25, everybody march. Sounds like a command, everybody march. All right. Uh, we have some new things being introduced here. Let's talk about those. At the top of the page, it says DS Alfine. It's again Italian. The DS, they have it there, is Desegno. I don't speak Italian. Let's just skip it. Okay, I call it DS. That's close enough. We've had DC Alfine, remember? Well, this is DS Alfine. DC, remember, goes, you, you go back to the beginning. Don't ask questions, just go to the beginning. Huh? Well, DS Alfine means you go back to the sign, not the beginning, the sign. And the sign is just a funny looking S thing. Here, you'll see it at the beginning of the second line above the staff. There's that weird looking symbol. That's the sign. So when you get to the DS, you go back to that point. You don't go to the beginning, you go to there and go through it. Alfine still re uh, means go to Fine. Marcato then means marked or accented. Here you see it at the beginning of the piece above the stab Marcato. They're telling you a style of how to play it, how to interpret it. There is a symbol for Marcato because you can actually make individual notes in the piece where you want. You can make those Marcato. A Marcato is a little louder than a, an accent. See the accents are those sideways arrows above the notes or below the notes, wherever. Well, a Marcato actually would be a little carrot. Where the accent is, there would be a little carrot. And that means a strong accent. Here, it's used as the style of the piece. You play this as a march style march. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, fine. So let's look this over. It's two pages long because it's on pages 25 and 26. Trouble in bass clef, no sharps or flats in the key signature. We're in the key is C major, so make sure you're doing the scale for C major. It's important. Uh, four, four time signature. Uh, I see a bunch of eighth notes and quarter notes and half notes and whole notes. We can do all that too. Now, if you look at the end of the first line, you see double bars. That's the symbol. The double bar is the symbol for the end of a section. Because music, a piece of music can be in sections. It's like a book can be in chapters. Well, a piece of music can be in sections. And a lot of times they don't have to, but a lot of times they will indicate the sections individual with double bars. And that's what this is. It's telling you the first line is one section and then the, uh, then you go into another section. And in this case, it, the first line is actually the introduction. Now the first section doesn't have to be an introduction. But an introduction, if it's used, is going to be at the beginning. That's the purpose. It introduces the piece. It sets the mood and the tone and the harmony. So, and a lot of times they will separate the introduction with double bars. And that's what that's for. It doesn't affect how you play it. It's just telling you about the form of the piece. So at the beginning, the first line, right hand, let's just check this. We're in, sort of in this position, in C position. And it's one and two and. One and two and three, and then you rest until the end of the line when the thumb comes down and you got the this here. F and a G and a B. And then you just go on. Second line, thumb comes back up. So the thumb keeps moving around. Okay, it does that. It's a little awkward, but that's piano playing for you. thumb just keeps coming up and down as it needs to. You get the idea, I hope. Now let's go over to page 26. On the first line, it would be the last two measures of the first line. You got this chord, and then go up. So I'm just going from here to here. And then going on, now I'm going to change hand position. I'm going to use two and four. See, it's the repeated notes. The F and G, uh, F and A are repeated. And that, so I'm simply changing hand positions on repeated notes. So we're going from here to here. I'm not using the C anymore. The left hand's playing it. Now, going on second line, third measure, they want here. They want you to come up. I want to wait till the repeated note. So on the second line, third measure, I'm going to use two and four on the first one, and then I'm going to come up. I'm going to change on the repeated note. Again, the second line, second measure is here. Then it's two, uh, two, four, and then one. So 
comes down and then going on during the rest you come to back down here like you were at the end of the and you're doing these chords okay. and then at the bottom the last two measures it is a C a D and an F sharp so you just spell out the chord and figure it out one note at a time and the last measure back here they don't need the natural sign in the last measure. It's a natural anyway, because the sharp in the previous measure is only good for that measure. But they're being clear. There's nothing wrong with it. They're just being clear. It's like saying, make sure you play enough natural here. And while I'm on this page, look at the end of the second line. You see the double bars and the fine? The double bars there should actually be a thin and thick bar line, not too thin bar line. So if you want to take a pencil and thicken out the second bar line, that would help. Because that's the fine when you do the DS off fine, that's where you're going to, the fine. And at the bottom you get the double bars because that's the end of a section. That's where you got the DS, where you're going to go back to the sign on the previous page. And the double bars tells you you're into this section. So it's like the last two lines on page 26 is a section all its own. Left hand at the beginning on page 25, you're down here. I play all these notes down in this position. So it's one and two and three and four and one, two. That second line, one, two, three, four. Well, this is nice because the right hand's busy enough. And the last measure of the second line, look out, it's a D. One, two, three, get the idea. Then on page 26, it's the second line, start with the third measure over. You're here. Stretch down just a little bit, thumb here. This way you can reach that C. And then you lift up and move. I don't like doing that, but in this case, we're going to go ahead and do that. You're ending a section going into the, you're going to lift up like a phrase, lift up. I want to be in position to go on because this is the melody, starting with the third line. One, two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, and Stretch up a little bit, third finger. And then reach down a little bit, third finger. Each time. Last two measures at the bottom. It's one and then a two. Again, I changed hand positions on repeated notes. And then reach up. And then we we'll go back to the sign. Put the hands together. Well, in the first line, it's one hand and then the other. So let's start with the second line. You're here. put the hands together then go through the hard parts that where you're hesitating or whatever and work out those spots get rid of all the hesitations you can go as slow as you need to doesn't matter but no hesitations and then we can start thinking about the articulation now marcato is a type of articulation I'll do that in the in when I get to the interpreting part of this right now it's just the accents so play the accent nose a little louder to suggest you go ahead and, like a first line last two measures left hand they're all accented I go ahead and separate these it, it helps to bring out the accents it's just a way of interpreting it not everybody does but I... and then we connect this I don't give you any articulation it's really up to you you can separate it or Phrase it as you see fit. This left hand, if you want to separate these a little bit, you can. But like at the end of the second line, with it when they're accented, I suggest to help bring out the accents, go ahead and separate those. Because if you don't, all you're doing is just play them a little louder on piano, because a piano can't do a true accent. All we do is play it a little louder. However, even on a wind instrument or some instrument where I can do a true accent, I would still tend to separate those notes if they're accented. Now when you get to page 26, it would be the last two lines where the left hand has, a, they have the slurs. Accent. So lift up and here. The, the right hand, you're just playing them. 
putting more weight on the accented note. I'll let the wrist collapse a little bit. Don't tense up and ow. Just a little more weight on those notes is all it is. For the dynamics, you'll have to decide on these dynamics. That's a general guide. The first line, the introduction, is very loud. F, F is fortissimo, is very loud. That makes the accented notes super loud. Yeah. I think I would make the introduction loud and let the accented notes be very loud. It's, it's just... Uh -uh. Like so. Now in the last measure, the first line, only the left hand is accented. This, this is... I hear the left hand there. And then in the third or in the second line, melody's in the upper staff, so the MF, the mezzo forte, that applies to the melody. The right hand is moderately loud, sort of, sort of loud. This left hand has to get in the background. So you get this can come out because they're accented. But it's a little tricky. The end of the second line, the left hand, I come up because of the accents. But then when I go to the third line, the left hand's got to get in the background again. I want to hear the right hand. So it's... in the left hand each time and then the, it gets in the background. Then when I get over to the third line on page 26, the melody is in the left hand and this is loud so these chords are about moderately soft to moderately loud. This and that makes the accent and note a very loud note. Okay, so the, you bring out the left hand for those two lines and the last two measures separate the left hand, or the right hand's in the background. So, so bring out the melody wherever it is. As far as the speed goes, well, it's a march. Left, right, left. On a metronome, a march is typically around 120. It's rough, right, but in that, it's a feel. You feel it there. So it's left, one, two, three, four, left, right. Then in the interpretation, that's where you can think about marcato. Although the way it's notated, I don't know that you need to think much about marcato. With all it's loud and the accents and all, it's pretty much marked already. So just, it's a march. Just be in the mood of a march. You want to bring out the phrasing or whatever, just listen to the melody wherever it is. It's typically every either two or four measures here. I don't know. statement replies to here. That would be the phrasing if you want to try that. Now we have this page turn to deal with. I've already talked about page turns before on another piece. Where you have to figure out how to get the page turned without messing up the beat. The beat has to go on steady. You don't mess up the beat because of a page turn. And there's different ways of handling it. The best way is always just memorize the piece. Then you don't have to worry about it. Other than that, maybe you memorize one page. Either page doesn't matter. Memorize one page, you don't have to worry about it. You see, you have this DS all fine, so you're going back and forth. That means multiple page turns back and forth. So really, it's best if you could just memorize it. Otherwise, you get somebody to turn the page for you. That's nice. It helps if they read music so they can follow along and know, because now you're turning back and you're turning forward and you're whichever. Mm -hmm. Or, yet yeah, maybe you turn the page yourself. Well, you do that, we got to figure out how to do it. Because we don't want to mess up the beat. Now, if there is a measure near the page turn somewhere, where one hand isn't playing, then you can use that, turn the page then. Well, one hand isn't playing, you turn the page. You may have to memorize a measure or two. But that's okay, you can usually do that fairly quickly. And then you turn the page during where one hand is resting. Well, in this piece, both hands are busy. 
neither hand is resting. So what do we do? All right. None of our options are very good here, but we do what we can. We don't like leaving out notes. We want to play all the notes. Well, sometimes you have to leave out notes to get the page turned because the beat is more important than the notes. Never mess up the beat. Never mess up the rhythm. You can miss notes or whatever, but don't mess up the rhythm. And you shouldn't miss notes either. Now, in this piece, they're busy. In the last major 25, they're busy. And then you're going on. Both hands are busy. So what we can do in this case is, since we have a whole note in the right hand at the, in the page 25, maybe we just play that as a quarter note and lift up. And then we got three beats to quickly turn the page. You could try that. Just just a quarter note and turn the page as you're playing those. We practice page turns if we have to. To see if you can do this all right, yeah, we practice the page turns. I don't have a lot of other suggestions for you. It's a, we got to figure out some way of turning the page. So you're going to have to. Here we're cutting a note short. We're uh, there the four beats. We're just holding it for one so that we can turn the page. Otherwise, I'm not sure what to tell you on that. Now, when you get to the bottom of page 26, here and you got to go back. Well, what do you do? Well, again, we, we don't have any rests anywhere, so we're going to have to figure out leaving out notes or something. And what we can do here, you can, if you need to, leave out this half note in the right hand. Just play here. And while you're doing that, turn the page back right quick. So I left out the half note so I can turn the page. Don't like doing that, but sometimes you have to because we got to get the page turned. It's up to you on how you do it, but figure out how to get this page turned forward and backward as you need to without messing up the beat. I can't legally tell you copy the music, just copy one page and put it over there because it's copyrighted and you can't copy it legally. So I can't say that. I didn't say nothing. We just got to try and turn the page. Now when we do the page, the play with me, I can't do page turns. So we're going to do the play with me a little bit different, but I'll explain that when we get there. Just a little bit about technique here. It's like uh, on page 25 in the second line, second measure with the eighth notes. This is tricky. It's awkward. I'm doing as I'm using weight. And here the, the wrist goes down on the CE and up for the black key. I'm transferring weight from these fingers to this finger. And as I do, I just rock the wrist. Takes a little time. Take it slow and easy, you'll get it. Then in the next line, second measure here, it's the same thing, except it's not a black key, it's a white key. So it's down on, on these, and as I lift up, I do the, the middle finger here. I'm transferring weight from these fingers to this finger. And I'm just rocking the wrist as I'm doing it. It helps me to, see I can 
push down with a weight whether the wrist is up or down. So that's all I'm doing is here and then transferring it to here, but I move the wrist up. Just real small motions. You don't have to go all over the place because we're using weight to push the notes down. Or here. here, just as slow as you got to go to get that and work on that. Let's play this together very slowly and check the notes and the rhythms. Now I can't do the page turns, so I got to do this a little differently. So what we're going to do is I give us four counts. We're going to do page 25. We're going to stop. We're going to turn the page. I'm going to count in again another four counts. And then we're going to do page 26. And then we're going to stop. In other words, I get down to the bottom of page 26. We're going to stop. I'm not going to do the DS on off and all that. So I'll give us four counts and let's do page 25 first. One and two and ready and go and one and two and four and Turn the page. One, two, ready, go.